Hello everyone, I welcome you all to this course on principle of plant biotechnology and I am your teacher today. Let me introduce myself. My name is Mr. Manav Bikas Gogoi and I am assistant professor in the department of agriculture biotechnology and today I am going to take a practical class on micropropagation of banana using shoot tip culture. Before going into the practicals of micropropagation, let me explain you what is plant tissue culture. Now, plant tissue culture is a technique of producing plants by using different plant parts such as cells, tissues, organs, leaf, stem and roots under aseptic conditions to produce large number of plants. On the other hand, micropropagation is a technique to produce clonal plants using asexual means. Hundreds of commercial micropropagation laboratories worldwide are currently multiplying different varieties of plants using micropropagation. So this technique is applied in different crops such as horticulture crops and forest trees. The foremost requirement of micropropagation technique is to produce plants in large scale under control and hygienic condition. I mean to say under disease-free condition. The northeastern region of India is known to possess a wide genetic diversity of banana germplasm. For example, in Assam, banana is grown in an area of 47.9 thousand hectares with a productivity of 17.9 metric ton, whereas production is 852 metric ton, which is far below the national average. The major constraint in banana production are disease caused by more than 50 different pathogens and out of which fungal infection is most prominent. And as a result, it is difficult to get quality planting material throughout the year. Traditionally, banana is grown by using suckers. So these suckers might be infested by various pests and microorganisms such as bacteria, virus, nematodes, as a result, yield goes down. Therefore, in vitro clonal plant production for producing healthy plant material is prerequisite. So therefore, micropropagation is the foundation of generating disease-free quality planting material. I hope you all got some idea what we are going to learn from this practical on micropropagation of banana. As I have said that we need healthy suckers to carry out banana micropropagation. Now generally there are two types of banana suckers found in the field condition. One is known as sword sucker, another is known as water sucker. But for micropropagation we need to collect sword sucker. So let me show you. This is one of the sword sucker which I have collected for this practical. Now, this is the sword sucker. From this sword sucker, we will extract the shoot apical meristem. So I have already extracted the shoot apical meristem. As you can see here, so this is the shoot apical meristem extracted from the sword sucker. Here you can see as I have collected the explant. Now this explant has two parts. The lower portion is known as rhizome. The upper portion is known as pseudostem. From rhizome and pseudostem, we extract the inner portion, and this is known the inner shoot meristem. Now, to initiate the culture, as you can see, this has turned brown is in color. So, to reduce the browning, we'll treat this explant with ascorbic acid solution. To carry out the practical on micropropagation of banana, I will take the help of our technical assistant Sukurmani, Indrani and Sarika. Now we will take the explant in a glass jar. As you can see, the explant lower portion has turned brownish in color as because banana contains high amount of polyphenols. To Reduce the concentration of polyphenols in the explants will be treating with ascorbic acid solution. So here we will be taking 1% ascorbic acid solution. We will be measuring 100 ml of ascorbic acid solution and 
We'll treat the explant with ascorbic acid solution. So treatment will be carried out for two to three minutes. After that, the explant will be washed using sterile distilled water or sterile RO water. Now as you can see, she is uh, treating the explant with ascorbic acid solution so that the concentration of the polyphenols goes down. After treating with ascorbic acid solution, we will remove the ascorbic acid solution from the glass jar. Now this will be treated with sterile RO water. So we will wash the explants for three times. As you all know that this process is carried out under very hygienic condition. So we must ensure that there are no contamination at any level. To prevent contamination in the cultures and in subsequent subcultures, we have to maintain a very hygienic condition. So therefore, washing with sterile water is very essential. After washing thrice with sterile RO water, then this explant will be treated with twin 20. So in this case, we will be taking twin 25 percent. So twin 20 is a detergent which is normally used to wash the explants to prevent from any contaminations. So here you can see we have used 5% twin 20 to wash our explants. So this process can be carried out for 2 to 3 minutes. Once using twin 20, we need to again use sterile RO water or distilled water to remove twin 20 from the explant. So three times we can wash the explants by using sterile RO water. Here as you can see, C is using sterile RO water to remove the twin 20 from the explants. After this process, we need to treat the explant with 70% ethanol. So that if any contamination remains in the explants will be removed after treating with 70% ethanol. So here in this case we are using 70% ethanol to treat the explant that is the shoot apical meristem collected from the healthy mother plant. So the explant is treated with ethanol for few seconds to minutes to prevent any contaminations. That's because tissue culture is carried out under in vitro condition in glass jar and in aseptic environment. Now this explant will again will be treated with RO water so that there is no remains of ethanol in the explant. Hope you all have got some idea about sterilization process to carry out micropropagation. Now the explant will be treated with mercury chloride solution. So in this case we are taking 0.1% mercury chloride solution to treat our explant. So there are various chemicals to treat the explants such as mercury chloride, then sodium hypochlorite. Mercury chloride is one of the most commonly used sterilizing agent in plant tissue culture works. So therefore 
In our lab, we also sterilize the eggs plants by using mercury chloride solution 0.1% for few seconds to minute. As you can see, we are sterilizing the X plant by using 0.1 mercury chloride solution for maximum one minute. After that, we will again wash with sterile RO water for three times. So the washing process has to be repeated for three times so that there is no remains of mercury chloride in the X plant. As you can see, we are washing the X plant after treating with mercury chloride solution. The process has to be carried out for three times. So this is second washing with sterile RO water. Then one more time we will wash with sterile RO water. After this process, the remaining part of micropropagation has to be carried out within the laminar airflow chamber. So for that process, we'll have to carry out the inoculation part in the inoculation chamber where the laminar airflows are installed. So laminar airflow is one of the most important and most valuable component of plant tissue culture. So before inoculation of our X plant, we have to prepare the nutrient media. So in plant tissue culture, nutrient media plays an important role. So for micropropagation, there are three types of nutrient media required. One is initiation media, second is multiplication media, and third is rooting media. So these nutrient media are prepared by using organic as well as inorganic salts. So we prepare the nutrient media by dissolving inorganic as well as organic nutrients. So in case of inorganic, we include all the major minerals such as magnesium, potassium, calcium, and these macro elements are required in gram per liter, whereas micro elements such as molybdenum, potassium iodide, zinc, manganese, these are required in very less amount in milligram per liter. Along with macronutrients, micronutrients, we add some of the other organic additives such as vitamins and other organic additives into plant tissue culture media. Now I request our technical person to show you the process of X plant preparation within the laminar airflow. So this is the laminar airflow, which is one of the most important component of any plant tissue culture or micropropagation process. As you can see the process, the X plants is being treated with 0.2% mercury chloride solution so that we want to ensure that there is no any contaminations within the shoot tips. Now we'll show you the process of removal of the mercury chloride solution. And this will be washed with RO water or one can use double distilled water sterile double distilled water it is always better to use sterile water so this washing process has to be carried out for three to four times so now we will show you the process of sterilization of the forcep and the sterilized blade 
Now the shoot tips of 5 to 7 mm size will be excised from the rhizomes and it will be trimmed by removing the outer coverings. As you can see here, the size of the explants is around 5 to 6 cm of size. From this 5 to 6 cm of the explants, the shoot tip ranging 5 to 7 mm will be excised by trimming the outer covering of the rhizome part as well as the shoot tip so that we get the exact size of 5 to 7 mm size of the shoot tip. Once we get the shoot tip, now this will be inoculated into the glass jar. So this nutrient media is known as initiation media or establishment media. As you can see, we have inoculated. Now, immediately we will have to close the lid of the jar. Then we write the date so that we can remember the exact date of inoculation so that we can observe the number of days to proliferation. Once we have inoculated the shoot tip culture in the culture jar, after 15 to 20 days these are transferred into another medium called multiplication media in the multiplication media you will see the growth of the shoot apical meristem and the shoot apical meristem swells in size and you can see the shoot turns greenish in color so this again have to transfer into fresh media that will be known as subculture 2. After 3 to 4 subcultures you will see that there are growths and multiplication of the shoot. There will be regeneration in the shoots. So this regeneration occurs because of the application of growth hormones into the nutrient media. So two most commonly used growth hormones are auxin and cytokinin. So cytokinin helps in proliferation of the shoots. So normally we use benzyl aminopurine. So this helps in shoot proliferation or shoot multiplication. So now you can see for further multiplication of the shoots, these are removed from the culture jars. These are clean, the black is and that tissues are removed from the shoot and these are further trimmed into smaller size and this will be again transferred into fresh media. So this is a process of subculture. So after each subculture the number of plants in a culture jar goes on increasing in numbers. So from one shoot tip out of each subculture we will get 300 to 400 numbers of micro plants but it will depend upon the person who carries out the subculture because at any stage we cannot allow the culture to get contaminated the plants which are around 5 cm height so those will be transferred into the rooting media rooting media helps in regeneration of the roots Whereas the plants or the microbe shoots which are smaller in size so those will be again put into multiplication media for further regeneration. So these plants as you can see here micro plants were transferred into rooting media. So rooting media is also very important. So this rooting media helps in proliferation of the roots whereas as you can see here some of the shoots are of smaller size so these shoots will be transferred into a media known as multiplication media for further multiplication so micropropagation is the process of multiplication of clonal plants through asexual method as you can see here this is the process of multiplication the smaller shoots are transferred into fresh multiplication media so this multiplication media helps in multiplying of the shoots
so again after 24 to 30 days this will be ready for next subculture so in this way we can continue subculture for eight times so now as you can see here there are two glass jars on your left hand side you can see that the culture jars contain the shoots which are smaller in size so this is a multiplication stage whereas on the right hand side you can see the plants which were transferred into rooting media as the plants does not contain any roots so we have transferred the plants into rooting media rooting media will help in the regeneration of the roots but once we get sufficient roots into these plants then these will be transferred into potting mixture now we will show you the different stages of micropropagation as i have already said that micropropagation has four different stages stage 1 is collection and inoculation of the shoot apical meristem into the media stage 2 is multiplication stage 3 is root proliferation and stage 4 is hardening once we have inoculated the micro plants into the culture jars then these culture jars are to be maintained in the culture room at a temperature of 24 degrees centigrade and in 16 hour light and 8 hours dark after 24 to 30 days we need to do the next subculture we will have to check for contamination in the cultures in general fungal contamination appears within a week for the process of multiplication after 15 to 20 days of initiation when the explant turns green the shoot tips are transferred to the multiplication medium subsequently the explants newly developed are subcultured and transferred to fresh multiplication media for 6 to 8 times at every 20 to 30 days interval. This helps in rapid proliferation and multiplication of the suits. Now, as you can see here, these are well developed banana micro plants which has been grown within the tissue culture lab. Now, these plants are ready for hardening process. So hardening process is carried out in two phases. One is primary hardening and another is secondary hardening. So primary hardening is carried out in the cocoa pit trees where we use cocoa pit as a potting mixture. So we use cocoa pit in the cocoa pit trees and once we take out the plants from the glass jar, these are washed with water so that there is no media remain in the plants. So these plants are washed properly, then these are transferred into cocoa pit trees. And these trees are kept in the polytunnels for 15 to 20 days so that the plants become acclimatized to the normal environmental condition. And after 20 days, we transfer the plants from the cocoa pit trees into the potting mixture in the poly bags. The potting mixtures are made up by using FYM, vermicompost and soil. So the concentration of FYM is 25%, vermicompost is 25% and remaining 50% is soil. So by mixing all this, we prepare the potting mixture. So once potting mixture is ready, then we transfer the plants from the cocoa pit tray into the potting mixture and these are kept in the polytunnels as you can see this is our net house uh, where we are keeping our micro propagated plants hardened plants and once the plants are properly hardened this will be recommended for planting in the field so that any growers or farmers who wants to cultivate tissue culture plants can procure the plants from here and they can grow the plants.
we recommend only the properly hardened plants to the farmers because growing properly hardened plant will give good results the advantage of growing tissue culture plant is that as the plants are available throughout the year and these plants are disease free there are no diseases as these are grown under totally aseptic conditions under very controlled conditions so these are totally free from diseases caused by various microorganisms dear viewers the practical on micropropagation of banana ends here so if you have liked the video kindly give your feedback in the comment section below thank you very much